There's nothing worse than finding out that an employee who has now left the business has password protected their Excel files. Or maybe there is something worse. It's your workbook, it's your password, and you've forgotten it. Either way, you're stuffed, right? Well, maybe not. Excel has six different types of passwords, and most of those are easy to remove. So buckle up, let's go and find out how we can remove some of those Excel protection passwords so you can get back to working with your favorite spreadsheet. Of the six passwords in Excel, four of them are protection passwords, and this is where we're starting our video. First of all, we have allow edit ranges. This allows areas of a worksheet to be edited if a password is provided. We apply this in the review tab and then allow edit ranges. I'll click new and then create a new range. I'll then define the range which can be edited. Next, I'll provide my password and then I'll click OK. I need to re-enter the password and click OK again. Then I can close that dialog box by clicking OK. So that's the allow edit ranges password. Next, we have the sheet protection. This prevents users from making changes to a worksheet. We apply this in the review tab again by clicking protect sheet. Here we can see a list of all the actions which are permitted and which are not. I'll enter a password in here and then click OK. Then I need to re-enter my password and click OK again. My worksheet is now protected. The next level of protection is the workbook protection. This prevents users from adding, deleting, hiding and unhiding worksheets. In the review tab, we can see the protect workbook button. I'll click that. I'll then enter my password, click OK, then re-enter the password and then click OK again. The final password in this category is the file modify password. This requires a user to enter a password before they can make changes to a workbook. We apply this when we save the workbook. So when saving, we go to tools and then general options. Then I can apply a password to modify. I'll click OK, re-enter my password and then click OK again. Then finally, I can click save. So now with these four levels of protection applied, if I try to insert, delete, hide or unhide worksheets, I can't, it's grayed out, it's protected. If I try to make a change to the protected section of a worksheet, it won't let me because that cell is protected. For the allow edit range that I created earlier, it asks for a password. If I know the password, I can enter that and make changes. If I close that workbook and try to reopen it, it will ask me for my password to modify the workbook. So that's four different types of protection that we've applied using passwords. Now, over at Excel Off The Grid, we have a free tool that you can download that helps you remove these types of passwords. And you'll find a link in the description box below. So all you need to do is to open up that tool. Then you can simply click remove protection and then navigate to the workbook that you want to unprotect and then click OK. The tool now creates a copy of that workbook with those four types of protection removed. It was that easy and it doesn't impact your original workbook because it takes a copy. If we now open that workbook, it doesn't require a file modify password. The workbook structure is unprotected. The worksheet is unprotected, so I can edit cells and the allow edit ranges section does not contain any ranges. Now the tool works in most circumstances. However, if you have an exceptionally large workbook or you just want to do it yourself, then we can also do this manually. We start by taking a copy of the workbook. Then we make sure the extensions are visible by clicking view and file name extensions in the Explorer window. We need to rename our workbook to a .zip file type. We will get a warning about the risk of the file becoming unusable. This is a copy, so we know we aren't taking any risks, therefore we can click OK. Now let's drill into the zip file, and then we will go into the Excel folder. Let's start by removing the worksheet protection. So I'll go into the worksheets folder. You can see we have two worksheets. I'm going to double click on the XML file for one of those worksheets. It reveals the Excel code. Searching for the word sheet protection shows the code that we need to find. It starts with an opening angled bracket and ends with a slash and then a closing angled bracket. This is the code that is created when we apply worksheet protection. Below that, we also have the protected ranges. This is the allow edit range that we created. Notice how this code section starts with an angled bracket and protected ranges 
and ends with a slash and a protected range closing bracket. So this is the section that we need to remove. Now we can't edit the file here, so we need to close this. Then we're going to drag our file outside of our zip folder. Then we can edit our file using Notepad, which is an application which comes pre-installed on all PCs. Let's start by finding the word sheet protection. There we can see the section of code that we need to remove, and below that we have the protected ranges. So let's select both sections and then press delete. We can now save that file and close that file. And let's drag it back into our zip folder and replace the previous version. We would need to repeat this for each of the worksheets that we want to remove the protection from. Okay, now let's remove the workbook protection. So we go up one level to the Excel folder and there we can find the workbook.xml file. If we open that up, you can see that we have the workbook protection section. This is the code for protecting the workbook. We can also find the file sharing section. This is the code for the file modify password. Now let's close this file and do the same thing as before. We'll drag the workbook.xml into another folder. We'll then open that file with Notepad. Next, we'll search for workbook protection and then delete that section of code. Then we can search for file sharing and also delete that section of code. Okay, that's done. We can now save that file and close that file and then drag that file back into the zip folder. And we do want to replace the previous file. We can now go back to the folder which contains the zip file and we want to remove the .zip extension. And now when we open up that workbook, you'll notice, first of all, we don't have a file modify password that's been removed. Secondly, there's no workbook protection applied. Thirdly, there's no worksheet protection applied. We can edit any of those cells. And finally, in the allow edit ranges section, there are no ranges that we've created with passwords. And that's it. We've seen four passwords that can easily be removed, either manually or through using our tool, so that it helps to change the XML inside that original Excel workbook. The next password we're looking at is the VBA project password. This prevents users from seeing our VBA code unless they know the password. To apply this password, we go into the Visual Basic Editor by pressing Alt and F11. Then we right click on the workbook in the project pane and select VBA project properties. In the protection tab, we can lock the project for viewing and then provide our password. We'll need to provide that twice and then we can click OK. Now, if we save, close and reopen our workbook, if we try to view the code, it asks for a password. If you want to use our password removal tool, you can open up that workbook and also the workbook with the protected VBA project. Then we just need to click remove VBA protection. It displays a message to say that it's completed and that's it. We can now open up that VBA project. It works. Now the key thing to realize is that this does not remove the password. It simply unlocks the code and makes it viewable. But you can now go into the project settings and remove that password if you need to. Now, if you want the VBA code to be able to perform this type of action, there is a link in the descriptions box below. Full disclosure, I didn't write the code to unlock the VBA project. It was created based on a thread of comments inside Stack Overflow, and that's also linked inside the descriptions box. So please go and look at that and give the original author some love over there on Stack Overflow. The final method is the file open password. This actually encrypts the workbook, which means that we can't use any of those XML methods to see that original source code. To apply this, during the save process, we click Tools and then General Options. We then enter our password in the Password to Open box, then click OK. We then re-enter our password and click OK again. If we now save, close and reopen that workbook, it will ask for our password. Now this workbook is encrypted. That means that even if we try and look at the source code for our Excel workbook, that it will be meaningless. Now I don't have a simple method for removing this password. The only way I know is using a third party tool to perform a brute force attack. Now I have used one of these tools in the past and that tool was called password find and it found my password within seconds. 
they claim that they recover 80% of passwords. It just depends on how complex the password is that has been used inside the Excel workbook. Now, this isn't an endorsement and this is entirely at your own risk, but if you decide that you want to try this tool, then you'll find an affiliate link in the descriptions box below. In this video, we've seen that Excel has very loose protection methods. Of the six methods, five of those can easily be broken. And actually, the file open password, well, we can upload that to a third party tool and they have an 80% success rate. So what's the best way of protecting an Excel workbook? Well, it's access. Don't give people access to an Excel workbook that they shouldn't have access to, even if it's protected in some way. If you like this video, why not click there to subscribe and then click there. That's the video you really want to watch next. Thanks for watching. I'll catch you next time.